thesmartlocal.com I'm ready. Good luck with F1. Hello everybody! Welcome to Extraordinary People. In this series, we profile Singaporeans who are leaders in their respective fields and discover what truly makes them extraordinary. Hey, so producer, who are we meeting today? Ah? And like, why are we wearing sports attire? Yeah, why are you asked us to wear like so active wear? Is it because we're meeting an Olympian? Today, we're meeting a 15-year-old world champion. <gasps> and you get to train with him to see what it takes to be a champion. 15 year old world champion? What were you doing at 15? I have no idea eh. Probably studying. Okay at least I like preparing for SYF. Oh, actually now that you say that, I also do SYF lah. Okay, okay lah. National competition. Yes. Can copy. <laughs> Hi! Are you Kai? Yes, I am. Are you the 15 year old world champion in like gymnastics or what sport? My name is Kai Mine Jimali and I represent Singapore as a competitive indoor skydiver. I've been competing since I was seven, and in the past five years, I've won a total of 24 medals. In April of this year, I finished first in the Open Freestyle category at the World Cup of Indoor Skydiving, and I took home my 12th gold medal. Honestly, this is my first time meeting an indoor skydiver. How about you? Yes, me too. I didn't even know it was a sport. <laughs> okay, maybe like walk us through, like, how do you even get interested in these sports in the first place? It, it is definitely a super niche sport. So when I was like three or four, um, my dad was invited to iFly Singapore, which is the only place we can train in Singapore. And I saw these people flying around and I was like, whoa, that's so cool. I want to try that. At three years old. At oh three, God. oh, so cute. Okay. And because in Singapore, you have to be seven in order to fly, I would every single year. And on my seventh birthday, my parents surprised me with a trip to iFly and I was hooked. From then, the same year, I started competing and I just wanted to do more and more and more and here we are. It sounds like you, you already know what you want as a kid, but how will you, how will you describe yourself like when you were a kid? I think I just really wanted to do everything. It's like, I, I would walk past like a taekwondo school, I see the kids doing the kicks, it's like, I want to try that. And I go past the music school, I hear the piano, it's like, I want to try that. Like at seven years old, like when you started like competing, as you mentioned, right? What are the, some of the challenges that you face this whole journey? I mean, like I was seven and I loved doing it. So I think the only challenge for me was that I couldn't get enough of it. So actually, right, we saw this TED Talk video you did when you were 10. So how did that come about? They were interested in like in me because I'm doing such a niche sport and also I'm homeschooled. So it's like a very different path. It's not a very normal path. And so they contacted my mom to see if I was interested. And I was like, yes. And honestly, I think I wasn't that scared of speaking because as a homeschooler, like I was always like taught by my parents and my teachers to like speak up about my ideas and and just like really present like a lot of things. So public speaking in a way was like in my curriculum. And I mean, it's TEDx is like, for me, it's like I couldn't say no. Were there like any other sports that like you were interested in or so? Yeah, so I was at Taekwondo, as I mentioned, I've been doing for even longer than I have been in those skydiving. So I think it's maybe 10 years at this point. What belt are you? Um, I'm third junior black belt. I'm converting to um, my black belt this year. Oh my god, congratulations! Oh, congratulations! Oh my god. Wow, yeah, such a high achiever. Yeah. And I do uh, wushu as well. I do calisthenics. I did ballet for a while, wow. but I hated it. And I did gymnastics for a bit, and I'm also doing tricking to get some like new ideas for uh, my indoor skydiving. So can I ask, why are we here and not at the indoor skydiving place? I'm coming here to do uh, tricking. Wait, what is tricking? Okay, so today we have Ray from the Hype Tribe, and he's gonna guide us through the basics of tricking. So tricking is a sport that combines exciting movements from gymnastics, martial arts, and even break dancing to create something out of the world. <gasps> Okay, I'm very excited to learn because right, I'm going to use all these stunts I learned today right, in my own dance also. But maybe you can use it tomorrow at the iFly also! 
Oh my god, okay, okay. I don't know if we are going to be able Whatever. to do that, but right. let's try lah, okay. let's try Trust la. in you. Let's try warm up, shall we? Okay, okay let's, let's go. go. Well, what we're going to start with is we're going to learn some aerials. We're going to start out with understanding the fundamental structure of aero. So now we're going to add the switch that we did just now. So from here, we're going to look behind, pick up and switch. What's going to happen is I'm going to hold on to your hand. Okay, and then I'll guide you through what it feels like to do an aerial. Okay, Kai, show me what you got first. Let's go. Okay, that's nice. So yesterday we really learned the tricking, right? So today we're going to be flying inside, right? We are, right? I'm kind of nervous. Okay. You think you can do the tricks from yesterday? Or not? Um, we shall see. <laughs> do you have any tips for us that we should look out for as first timers in the wind tunnel? Yeah, so because in the tunnel, the wind is really loud and you won't be able to hear anything. Your instructor will teach you some hand signals. Okay, can you show us like, what are some of these hand signals? Keep your chin up, relax. Oh, this is relax. Yeah, it's relax. Play. <laughs> oh, <can> and, <laughs> and if you're really not enjoying it and you want to get out, you can say, I want to get out. Okay. Hopefully my motion signals won't like make me do this. Right? I'm sure you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Let's go, let's go, let's go. You see if I feel... <laughs> let's go. Bye. Come. like chance right where like I was suddenly just like zoom up like that if I like, make any body adjustments. Maybe. <gasps> <laughs> but you'll be there to catch, right? Maybe. <laughs> 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 go inside but before we go we have a lot of questions we want to ask you actually yeah i'm very curious about a lot of things about your professional life yeah. i want to ask you do you feel like it's stressful being a professional athlete sometimes yeah so i think for like all all student athletes the biggest challenge is balancing like school and and training and especially now i'm older it's like there's a lot more pressure to perform in both of those areas and like of course like competitions are like super nerve-wracking for me but I think as an athlete, it's super important to be like mentally strong and to be able to like use those nerves to like have more positive energy in that way. So how did you feel like when you won gold at the World Cup this year? I mean, that competition meant so much to me. Like winning was like super surreal, especially because it was my first time competing in the open category because um, the year before that, I was in the junior category. And so I was also competing against people who have coached me since I was like, eight years old to more than half my life Ooh, okay, and so okay. competing against them was super stressful and, and really nerve-wracking for me but being able to come out on top really meant so much to me. So like are there any like life lessons that you also learned through your journey? There's so many it's like definitely one of them uh, one of the biggest ones is sportsmanship how to deal with like intense pressure how to deal with disappointment how like the importance of working hard and persevering and other things as well just like how to have empathy and with like competitors and it's also because we travel so much for competitions it gives me like a big worldview and like a better appreciation for cultures around the world as well. You are so eloquent and well-spoken at 15. It's insane. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, sometimes I feel like I forget that like, you're 15. Yeah, really. Okay, I have a big question for you. So, what does sportsmanship mean to you? It's been ingrained in, in, uh, in us, so me and my teammates since we were young, by our seniors in the Singapore team that whenever we go to competitions, we are representing Singapore and we need to put out our best front and make sure that we are respectful to our, te uh, to our teammates and to our competitors. Even if we lose, we're, we have to be happy for our friends or our competitors as well. It's also something that like, um, my seniors have taught me since I was like, really, really, really small that like, I always have to be like, graceful at competitions because I have, like, I'm representing a country. If you ask anyone in the competitive indoor skydiving world, uh, we've built a reputation for ourselves 
as being really supportive for everyone. So any competition you go to, you always hear us cheering for everyone. On a personal level, like, what is your own personal feelings like when you feel like, yes, I'm representing Singapore? Yeah, it's really just so amazing. It's like you're standing on the podium and then you're holding your flag and the national anthem is playing. It's like the, the pride that you feel is like unlike anything else. It's hard to describe. It's just, it makes me feel like I've, I've done it and I'm really representing the country and like everyone's looking at you. It's like, it's just so amazing. Do you think like you'll be doing this sports for like a long time? Well, in the near future, I have um, maybe one or two competitions lined up for the end of this year. And what I'm looking forward to the most now is next year's World Championships in Belgium. So I'm aiming for that and I'm preparing so I can give an even better performance in this year. I like as an athlete, you can't keep like competing forever. But I definitely want to give back to this community because it's given me so much. So I, I think I would want to continue like maybe in coaching and that we'll just have to see where, where I go with that. Thank you for sharing so much with us. So like, I guess like, now we are all warmed up and ready to go in. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, let's I'm go. I'm excited to see actually. Okay. I'm excited to see you guys fly too. <laughs> oh, we'll see you about that. Okay, I'm let's nervous. Go, let's, let's go. go, let's go. Let me tell them one time, I've been on the grind, this my prime. Ha. Let me tell them one time, I've been on the grind, and this my prime. Yeah, I'm sorry for the wait, didn't think I'd come up, y'all just need a little faith. I've been pacing, just waiting on the river with an ace. Gotta move real careful, we come and survey in the place. I touch down in your city, that's a rival. Y'all got one thing on your mind, it's survival. But if you wanna take a shot at the title, call the medic, we checking your vitals. Let me tell them one time, I've been on the grind, this my prime. Ha. Let me tell them one time, I've been on the grind, and this my prime. Let me tell them one time. Set them all in my prime. Let me tell them one time, I've been on the grind, feeling real good, yeah, all in my prime. It's about that time. Say your goodbyes, cause ain't no mess for the way that I grind, yeah, all in my prime. Prime time with my heart. The gate closed, same city as voice and I mean woes It's flat best for the checks, that's a bank rolls I've been killing it, I'm guilty, case closed Y'all yeah. are too basic, my reputation Borderline amazing, good things coming They just need a little patience Ready for whatever, all you gotta do is say when In my eyes, when I rise, I visualize I ain't ever taking a break, you taking five Even if I ain't got it, know that I make the time On my next move, by the time that the ink will dry huh. Let me tell them one time, I've been on the grind, this is my prime. Ha. Let me tell them one time, I've been on the grind, and this is my prime. Let me tell them one time. Set them all in my prime. Let me tell them one time. Tender, eh. <laughs> I thought it would be scary, but it was actually way more fun than scary. And you're damn good! Thank you. <laughs> you guys are really good too. No, you're just saying this to humour us, I swear. <laughs> How's your experience? It was really, really fun. It was really way more fun than scary. What, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, I will do it again. Uh. And like, I think like maybe I kind of want to try like doing tricks in the wind tunnel or so. I cannot imagine eh. Actually, I wonder how, what, how much training you have to go through to get to this stage because I cannot even imagine turning my body in that state. It's a lot of training. It's eight years. Like, insane. <laughs> eight years. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for, for humoring us and showing us so many tricks. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, thank you for coming. You guys are, you guys really were good. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, let's go get changed, okay? Yeah, let's go okay, see you later. Bye-bye. I wish you got something to remember. This fall, but oh well. I'm gonna come back here again. Okay, here's your certificate. I hey, graduated. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for watching this episode of Extraordinary People. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Ring the notification bell down below and watch our other videos over there. Bye bye. Bye. You wanna fly again? Oh yeah. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs>